gentleman. He's worked with some greats. Um, can I just say Prince? I can just stop right there. <laughs> Prince. <laughs> he's worked with Prince. He's he he's worked with Jill Scott and countless other artists and musicians all across the nation. Um you're going to meet him today and I know you're going going to be blessed by a lot of what he has to say in his story. Ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, Mr. Jerris Mozi. What's going on, brother? <laughs> How y'all doing? <laughs> Did I say that right? Because you know, I know everybody butchers your first name. You actually, yeah, you said it right. <laughs> Jerris, right. we'll see. We're going to call you J-Mo. J-Mo. <laughs> yeah, you. But Jerris, Mosey, you know, if you if you want to find my uh, original music, you got to type in my real name. That's J-A-I-R-U-S, right. J-A-I-R-U-S, Jerris Mosey. Jerris yeah. Mosey, that's right. And, mm-hmm. and you guys go out there. He has a catalog, let me tell you, of, of, of work, uh, pr- production, um, from some of your favorites and mine. And um, I, I'm just excited to dive into conversation with you, man. So we, we are missed a pandemic. We we are here in 2022. How you doing? What's going um, on with you? And uh, just been uh, living life. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Just uh, trying not to let that, you know, you know, just rain over my parade of life, mm-hmm. you know? And so, uh, yeah, staying healthy, working out, um working out in the mornings and in the working period just right. working you know what i'm saying That's so right. yeah it's, it's a beautiful thing man it's a beautiful thing man we 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 have so much um <clears throat> in common and we have so much common ground um as far as you know music and music families um mm-hmm. you come from a very musical family um i i want to first start out talking about your beginnings man um i met you probably um 1999 uh we were in atlanta we were in atlanta there was an assembly being held and i i discovered you first on drums <laughs> that was my first uh introduction to you of course i knew your dad um man i i, I you know i i can tell you stories about um hearing him for the first time and then being able to play with him um, mm. remind remind me to tell you that story the first time okay. i got a chance to play with him <laughs> But right. um, but it 19- listen, it was we, we might as well go there, man. It, it was so we were we were in uh <laughs> we it was I'm trying to think the year it was like 96, 97, somewhere around there. We were in Atlanta. Bishop Manning was still living and um, Pastor Blackman um, was having they were having some type of assembly or something here in Atlanta. We got invited. I didn't know that your dad was going to be there. And so we, we, I got a chance to, to meet him. So I didn't come, you know, I'm thinking I'm going to hear him play and some of the other guys. And mm-hmm. well, so it, it turns out I was playing keyboard. I was playing keys for a choir. I got mm-hmm. a chance to meet the Henderson sisters. So, um, uh, I called the aunt Faye affectionately. Um, then who was living, she, you know, she was such a, she was such a joy to be around. Yeah. But, I love her. Yeah. So she she um she was there and, and I played piano. So I was playing piano starting off. And what happened was they didn't have a steel player. Your dad was on guitar and then going back and forth, mm-hmm. he would play something on guitar and then get on steel. Yep, <laughs> and then yep. I think Pastor Blackman got on, but he was doing so much. So I'm looking at him like, oh man, like he needs somebody. <laughs> like <laughs> so your dad looked at me and was like, You play? I said, yeah. He said, he said, you want to play guitar? I said, oh no, I play the steel, <laughs> you know, because I, mm-hmm. you know, your dad's just he was amazing on guitar, on both. He plays amazing steel and mm-hmm. and guitar. But I would, he would let me play, um, play that show. But that's what's up. Yeah, yeah I, I got on, and it, it was like it was it was almost like a like an introduction to to playing with him in in, in an interview at the same time. And, mm-hmm. and I guess because he asked me to come back the next day, <laughs> I passed. But um, yeah. it, it was, man, it was intimidating because your dad was like somebody I admired and looked up to. And he was, he's so developed. Man. <laughs> he was so developed, but I was, I was, a, I was a nervous wreck. <laughs> yeah. And I, 
if you can imagine just growing up witty, you know what I'm saying? It's like a standard. I didn't understand it at first okay. growing up, you mm -hmm. know what I'm saying, as a child mm -hmm. until like, you know, you go out in the world and you understand, you see like other people playing, you're like, dang, okay, they're not really as good as my dad. Like, mm. I know my dad is good, you know what I'm saying? Right. But like, uh, yeah, man, like this, you talk about the show buzz and all this, I mean, I learned how to play on the actual uh, uh, Lorenzo Hart because it's yeah. at my dad's house. Oh. Yeah, yeah. So every summer, wow. we fly back from California to Indiana. And that's how I kind of learned a lot of what I was learning. I was teaching myself a lot, you know, in the garage. He let me go in there and just, you know, I'll turn on the Lorenzo it. Hart and just go in there. And I learned how to wow. play a lot of stuff on that. You know what I'm saying? That's amazing. And, uh, yeah, you just imagine growing up around that, man. I, I got to see, you know, you know, my dad used to clean up the church. So we used to be in the church all the time. All the time. And um, I got to see what hard work is mm -hmm. and being faithful is mm. my father. So, yeah, man, this is like, it was like a school, man. It was like, it was going to a music school and I didn't know I was going to, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like right. school of life and everything else, you know what I'm saying? Wow. Uh, but yeah, man, it's a blessing. It, it, it is a blessing and 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 I, I go back to the 99 year that i met you i see see you on drums playing with mm -hmm. your dad i mean it, and it's it, it there is no um question in my mind where it came from um but to, just to hear your story of how you were exposed to it at a young age being in the garage having access to the harp um you know having um access to the church because your dad you know clean and and just doing mm -hmm. things there so you were there with him and you were exposed to all of this man at a young age yeah so. yeah man i got a picture uh well i posted it on my stories i'm gonna post it on my regular uh instagram okay but it's a picture of my dad uh it was i know it was after service and we was in cleveland because i remember this okay. we, okay. we was in a hotel making tapes Okay. That was another thing I used to have to do with my dad, okay. you know, make tapes of the service right mm -hmm. after service. And he mm -hmm. had me, he taught me how to dub tapes and then we would label them, mm -hmm. take them to the church, you know what I'm saying? Help them sell them after church, wow. you know, church. So I did all that, man. I was, I grew up in the Jewel Dominion, like thick, you know what I'm saying? Like I got the whole experience, man. I got to be around chief. I got to be around uh, all the bishops. Wow. Uh, Bishop uh, Burns. I had a lot of conversations with Bishop Burns and Bishop Marks um, wow. from Michigan. Rest in peace. Yeah. We, uh, I remember all these conversations as a child, man, being in a van, traveling different places. And um, yeah, man, it was a unique experience, man. I, I can't I can't hardly explain it to other people because they don't understand where, you know, exactly where we come from in the in the cloth. You know what I'm saying? Mm. It's what, guys like the key to me and they can't understand it until they see it right and it's like oh wow this is like totally different like yeah man this is where i came from it's just yeah. it didn't come out of thin air you no. know me getting grammys and all <laughs> that. i just stood head fast in music you know what i'm saying and took it further but this is my foundation man being around you know and then i got to be around my uncle my uncle robert which is like he he was so creative man you yes. know what i'm saying in my opinion, <laughs> And uh, yeah, man, I don't want to go down a tangent. No, no, listen, th this is what it is. It's you know, yeah. I I really appreciate um all of them. Um, you you talked about mm -hmm. your aunt Kim, and and um your uncle Robert. I mean, honestly, they these are people I admired coming up. Um, mm -hmm. Glenn Glenn Lee, who I really um admired too. Um, when I was when I was younger, and Glenn, Ooh. of course, was on the Keith side. Keith Dominion side. So the, you know, for those of you all listening, so our, our background is church, as you can tell. And, um, we came from the, uh, either church of the living God or, you know, kind of the house of God, Keith Dominion. We were all like one big family. Um, we were all mother Tate's children as, as we would all put it. She was the founder of, of the organization, but we would, it, it the, the music, the sounding, the, the one sounding, Thing that we had in common was the the steel guitar and, right. and the music so it was it was a di distinct sound you know between the two dominions keith and jewel but the experience as you just said was you had to be you had to to experience the service you had to be a part 
of mm -hmm. that type of service to to understand um, yeah. and to get the feel of what it is to 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 be in that. It was a spiritual. It was a spiritual thing. And that's something we got. About to say that I was about to say it's a very soulful. You said another word, spiritual. Yeah. So it's like when you get it, man. It's a whole vibe. What they call it now, it's a vibe. <laughs> it's a vibe. <laughs> it's a vibe. It's a vibe. And it's something that you can't really just you can't grasp it by just watching it, and trying it. You gotta be. You gotta experience the whole thing. You gotta go to the church for a few years to get a, a percent of what you probably think you're gonna get. Like. <laughs> You're gonna try it. Like it's the same thing like I tell people like the house of uh is a house of prayer. Mm-hmm. With you the horns. Yeah, the, with the yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. It's the same thing, man. It's yeah. like, yeah, you can play trombone, but I'm pretty sure you're gonna it's gonna take you a few years to like hop in a line and understand the whole science behind it because it's a sound. It's it is. it's certain people that, you know, cultivated that sound, you know, and it's something that you gotta study. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah. and really be a part of the whole experience to to grasp it you know it's a lot of people that think they uh can just grasp it out of thin air and i'm like man you gotta go to church yeah like, <laughs> like i actually went to church man it's friday friday saturday sunday wednesdays you know what i'm saying like mm -hmm. every week and i was playing you know what i'm saying so and sometimes uh especially when i was younger i was just watching mm. you know what i'm saying i wasn't playing i was just watching and just Cause everybody's so good you know what i'm saying it's right. like you know so yeah man it takes time to you know you can't just go from here to there quick i tell people it's no cheat code man you gotta yeah. you gotta sit down and and sit somewhere and learn something you yeah. know what I'm saying? like take your time it takes time man it, like, it does the, i think the cheat code was spiritual how about that the, the, that, exactly. the, the cheat yeah. the cheat code was really the the the, the time that we put in the spirituality mm -hmm. that that was instilled in us yeah. and 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 the foundation um that was laid not only just musically but right. it was just a con it was a connect it was it was a spiritual connect it was a brotherly connect bro sisterly connect it was mm -hmm. all of that wrapped up in one and, yep. and and if you were sitting there if you never experienced it before you're sitting there like what in the world is going on and yeah. it's like we, and, it, and it goes from it goes levels it's levels to this thing mm -hmm. you know we you climbing it, you yeah. know it, it's 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 a grab and, it, and it's like you get to a place where it's like wow you know yep. Yep. um you, you 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 almost having a conversation that me and your dad have often that you yeah. know it's it's, yeah. it's 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 such a um it's it's hard to explain the music it's hard to explain the the vibe of the music because mm -hmm. it's just that spiritual it's just yeah. that insightful mm -hmm. you know there's a history that comes along with it that you just you have to learn it you, <laughs> you can't do. go blow past it so it's like i see yeah. you know robert randolph he's probably the more most commercial person i tell people like hey man look at robert randolph he's right. from our church right but robert randolph he went through the ringer too so it's like you're not gonna find like a random person out in the wild probably that's gonna just come out of nowhere sounding like robert randolph right because he has studied all the you know what i'm saying it's a it's a study that goes along with it with yeah. music you know what i'm saying yeah. so you got the spiritual side we know when you get in service and you get you know in front of people it's a spiritual side and it's no form of fashion you know what i'm saying i had mm -hmm. heard that a long time ago you know a lot of times right dress up you know <laughs> put on the suit Right. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I went through everything. Trust me. Yes. So like, uh, yeah. it's a whole, it's a whole thing that you got to study, man. And it shows you um, that um, for me, it's it taught me that you have to to learn a certain style. You have to study the individuals that cultivated mm -hmm. that sound. Right. You know what I'm saying? What were they thinking? What were they going through? You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Along with when you're playing it in a moment implement that spiritual side along with the mathematics and the things that you learned over here right you know what i'm saying so it's a combination of both and that's when you start seeing things happen right you know what i'm saying it's really uh it's a form of taking yourself out of it that's what i learned from my father as well mm -hmm. you know pray before you play it ain't really about you right now you take in what the spirit is giving you in this moment and you give it to the people the people you know what i'm saying they they're going to 
you're gonna see if it's the spirit is flowing or not you know right. in that church it taught that church taught me a lot man like yeah. about create being creative on the spot watching my father uh especially my father and my uncle robert man so can you imagine i'm just a kid every <laughs> sunday i get to see these dudes every sunday Prime even at the time house, like yeah, we at the house chilling three and four days back to back. They coming up with tunes, doing this. And can you just imagine that that's all that's inside of me, man? You know what I'm saying? Watching that and then going to the church and I will see these guys create things on the spot. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And then the reaction of, you know, our church is really react. They gonna tell you if it's good if enough. dancing or not. Yeah, if they <laughs> dancing, it's a good tune. Mm -hmm. They not, if they not dancing, it's all right. It's all right. It's all right. You know right. So. I learned that and that implemented that helped me in the real world where I'm well not the real world but the uh music world I'm in right now right you know uh in the Hollywood and trying to uh you know get songs on the charts and all these things it helped me to narrow down getting a creative melody and a, a nice chord changes I yeah. learned that from watching my father and my uncle Robert you know in Gammy and watching these guys make them make up tunes on the spot on the you know spot. And people are shouting in this in the floor is packed it's like to me it was watching it was like watching somebody write hit songs on the spot on the spot and the, and that's what i do when i get in the studio and people's like dang really like how do you do that like that's where it comes from man it comes from my father my <laughs> uncle watching these guys like and then my other uncle uh james robert postel mm -hmm. mm -hmm. i played with him in uh you know when i moved to california since mm -hmm. i was 10 years old so man like <laughs> that's where this is my foundation that people don't understand i'm glad you're doing these podcasts this podcast because uh i was just talking to somebody about this a lot of people don't take the time to sit down and hear what people think they wow. want to grasp so yeah as far as the musicians you know what i'm saying they'll they'll watch you play all day and try to take something from that and try to steal that lick or whatever right but they won't sit down and actually listen to what how you think and how you right. came up with which is and very those important. Are the people, yeah, these are the people that end up standing out because they take time. Hello. You know what I'm saying? Hello. So you got a lot of people that just don't want to take the time, man. That's what I want people to understand that it takes time to get to where, you know, the best and all these things, you know. It takes time, man. So put in the time. Put That's all you got to do. Start right now. You know put, what in it, put in the time it, listen man you 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 already talking man it, this is this yeah. is good that, I, and i'm glad you said that i'm glad you went that route i mean you you're not only mm -hmm. talking about your ri rich history of how you were brought up but you're, you're talking about your work ethic and mm -hmm. and a lot of people don't understand um you, you know for those of you all that are joining us i'm, I'm talking to jaris mozi um who is a grammy a two-time two-time did i say that three. right three times <laughs> excuse me Three-time <laughs> Grammy winner, okay? He's up for some Grammys this year, 2022. I mean, we're talking to somebody with a work ethic, and he's dropping gems like you would not believe. Um, one of the things you, you said is is most people want to steal your riffs, but they don't want to they don't want to know how you think. They right. don't they they are not after the approach of the mm -hmm. music and and you you so eloquently explained how you how you got it and and where it came from um what are what are some other things that you notice about a lot of the musicians now because you're you're you, listen you you've played amongst the best you 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 you've been in sessions with the best um musicians r b pop you name it i mean you've been in those sessions you you've produced those albums You've won the Grammys. I mean, um, talk to me about how it how it is being in the industry. A as you stated, it's hard to get people to it's hard to explain yourself um, as far as where you come from and and trying to get people to understand that church world that was a normal for us. For them, they walk into it. They're like, mm -hmm. you know, what is this? You know, so. Um, what what are some other things that you that you that you find in the industry with with musicians that if you could just drop some more gems that would help them? Like I said it's about putting in the time, yeah. putting in the work. Um, and I would tell a lot of guys, man, you really you have to like dress the part. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? I had it took me a long time to learn that because okay. I was stubborn. You know what I'm saying? Okay. 
growing up, you know, especially in the church when you always got to put on a suit, always got to do this, you know, and then you see your, some of your friends, they get to wear Jordans. And it's a time and a place for everything, how you dress. Wow. And that's one thing that I learned, you know, coming up in the industry, man. Um, dress the part, man. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? If you got a, you know, if it's a gig for, uh, for Frankie Beverly you trying out for, you going to go up in there with some Jordans and some, uh, you know what I'm saying? Like trying to look like, you know, you off the streets. Right. You can't do that. You got to have at least a button up. You know what I'm saying? Some right. cool pants look decent. Right. You know what I'm saying? It took me a long time to learn that. But mm -hmm. that's what's something I think a lot of guys miss. You know, they think it's about the plan. And uh, that's a, yeah, that's a major part of it. Right. But you got to dress the part. Learn how to dress. Mm -hmm. Actually go out and shop. You know what I'm saying? Get you some clothes. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you're an artist, man. You want you you're supposed to be special. You want people to look at you and be uh inspired by you. So just like little stuff like this, like this ring. You know what I'm saying? Get right. you a ring, get you a watch. You know what I'm saying? Uh but you know, just dress the part. That's right. that's one thing I teach a lot of people. You're you're bringing up some some really interesting things. I think a lot of our um young musicians need to hear. Um mm -hmm young and old alike they they need to understand um you you I, you go ahead now i was about to say I, it popped in my mind i mm -hmm. was going to say something about your personality and your character mm. so it's it's uh it's a lot of guys i see out here they they they, they just uh i mean they're not approachable yeah it's like <laughs> you, you gotta humble yourself man you know what i'm saying we know you good we know you dope. That's why you here. That's why we call you. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But it's your character. If you're wondering why people is not calling you and you dope and you dress good, it's probably your character. It's your it's attitude. How you are around people and how you talk to people and you know and how you carry yourself and and I learned another thing. You know, every you don't have to talk all the time. Just be quiet. You know what I'm saying? Like, just hush. If you don't got nothing to say. Just hush, man. Sit back and learn something. You might it's somebody <laughs> in the room you can learn from. That's right. And so, yeah, man, it's little stuff like that that'll get you fur like a little further. You know, it's really about being a nice person, man. Yeah. At the end of the day, mm -hmm. and you know, um, when you're on these tours and stuff and stuff like that, it's just about being a good person, man, in life, period. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So I would yeah. say that, man. No, that's <laughs> this is good. No, this is this is good. And it needs to be said. Um, there's a there's a book that you just reminded me of um, John Maxwell wrote called um, talent is not enough talent right. talent isn't enough um, when you're when you're so talented you walk in the room with all this talent and yeah. you're good yeah everybody love they know you they they hear you the, yeah, yeah you can sing you can play you can do whatever mm -hmm. but you're late yeah your attitude is bad you don't have no good you don't have a good work ethic you know, right. there, there's so many other internal qualities. You're, you know, as you talked about the character, it's it's not it's not up to par, and those mm -hmm. things really matter when it comes down to, to yeah. to to how we we show up and how we are are, are revered in the mm -hmm. industry, and it's important, man. So yeah. so so you you've been doing this, man, and and I, I'm not gonna ask your age, but you're you're young, you're young, I'm 34, man, you're 34, I'm 34 years, 34 yeah. years young. And you're you're this successful, man. You you've worked with some of the some of the greatest musicians I've ever known. Um, <clears throat> I've had the privy of of um, uh, having. So I, I did I do these dream boards, okay? And mm -hmm. I, I have people that I want to work with and things that I want to do. And man, listen, manifestations. Th this stuff is real. You you know you got to put it before <laughs> you. You I'm a visionary. Like I, I dream. So anything I want, you know, I, I have dream boards. I, I affirm yeah. it. You know, I do it all. And if you stick to that, it works. Listen, a lot of people don't stay consistent, but if you stay consistent, it works. It, let me tell you what's funny. I on my dream board, one of the people that I desired to work with was Prince because I admired him so much as a musician, mm -hmm. and um, I loved his music. And of course, I would be at the last concert that he mm -hmm. performed here in Atlanta, right Dang. before he passed away. It was the it was like the ten o'clock show. He had a, he did a seven o'clock show and a ten it was a ten or ten thirty show that night. 
in Atlanta a couple days later um he would he would pass away but mm. I was there it was my first and only experience and it was just him in the piano so yeah. I'm, I'm bugging out like you know my dream came true I at least got a chance to see him play live and 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 just be you know and he's he was just a genius he was mm -hmm. a musical genius but what was funny is I had him on my vision board and I always said you know I'm gonna work with him but it's so funny I met his guitarist Cat mm. Cat Dyson Cat Dyson yeah that's, that's <clears> we just played we just played together a couple months ago um she was here um with Joey now we're we're working together I'm I've, I'm just joined a, an association that they're starting and and um she's she she pulled me to the side she was like you I love what you're doing she said, "You you going you going to teach me. You going to you know, she's so cool, man. She's the best." And she just started she is, man, and she she just started encouraging me. And she started giving me insightful things uh nice. to do the approach and and certain things to take and it was just like, "Wow. I had this this vision over here, but God was sending people that work with him my way." And she ain't the only one. So mm -hmm. Tam Tamar Davis, Ashley Tamar Davis. She, that's she, who, when, I, when, I, when I was playing with Prince, bro, that's who was. That's singer. who was singer. So <laughs> so you was with, doing the, the thirty one twenty one. Mm -hmm. So I did all those man. parties. And all that man, I was I wasn't supposed to probably be in there, but I was there. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, was she yeah. is Ashley is amazing, and I'm mm -hmm. we we've been working together. You're gonna be here about hear, hearing about some of the stuff that we're doing together. Um, she has a, uh, a a nonprofit program that she's doing to work with kids, giving oh. back to them, and we connected, and and now we're working together, and she's she's doing stuff here in Atlanta, and we're partnering, and it's so like if you all don't dream, if you all don't believe in the things that you see and manifest within yourself, it'll never be, because nobody can believe for you, you know what right. I'm saying? Nobody can believe. Um, what you have here, right? Like that you have here, you that's on you. And I promise you, man, everything that I've written down, the the the, the people that I've wanted, some kind of way has just manifested itself in a mm -hmm. positive way. And yep. people look at you and they think you just showed up out of nowhere doing right. what you do. And they don't know it's a story behind that. You didn't mm -hmm. you didn't just wake up just playing the guitar. And and just being who you are, this was a this was a daily walk. Right. This is this is what it was with you. So 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 we we talked about your your beginnings. We talked about um you know how 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 you started out. So so I remember you playing drums in '99. When did you pick up a When did you really pick up pick up a guitar and really became serious about it? What was that moment? What was that defining moment for you that you picked up the guitar and said, you know what? This is where it's at. <laughs> so this is what happened, man. So long story short, my parents got a divorce. Mm -hmm. We was living in Indianapolis mm -hmm. at the headquarters. Um, you know, all that happened. Mm -hmm. A couple years went by. We ended up moving back to my mom's hometown, Long Beach. Mm -hmm. I said when I was ten years old. And so what happened was, this was '98. What happened was we was going to the church in in LA, and it was only. Uh, at the time, rest in peace, it was Fred White playing the guitar. Okay. Um, but sometimes he wouldn't make it, you know what I'm saying, this and that. So, and then I, I knew a couple chords, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So, uh, I just took it upon myself, like, you know, I know what I want to hear. Right. But I got to just start playing. Right. And I knew that at a young age, so... You know, fortunately, my uh, my uncle James Robert was the pastor. I think at the time, if I'm not mistaken, him or my, him, it's been flip flopping between him mm -hmm. and my grandmother on my mom's side. Okay, so I always had like you know a big connection to the Los Angeles church, okay. and um, and they let me pretty much just have freedom in the music section. Okay, so like you know, ever since that age, I was like, you know, I know what I want to hear. I wasn't hearing my dad. I wasn't hearing my uncle Rob. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, I'm going to learn that because I know what it sound like. Right, right. Nobody was playing it though. So mm. that's what made me start playing like in the church. And then, okay. so what happened on top of that, you know, as I'm doing that, um, so literally we moved out there that summer, 98. 
I started doing that. I had that epiphany. Started mm -hmm. doing that literally probably that month or two. Right. Then a month after that or two, we would start going to school. So like that September. So okay. that entered me into I was I used to draw real good back in the days. Okay. Um, so I I wanted to be an artist, like a drawing artist. You sure. just paint on the back and stuff. Yeah. Um, that's some of my daughter stuff actually. But okay. um, yeah, I wanted to be an artist and draw. Mm -hmm. And so I had got entered into the school too late. So they couldn't, you know, accomplish, you know, uh, uh, how do you say it? Uh, they couldn't put me in a class. Sure. You know what I'm saying? In art class. Right. So they put me in a music class. Got as it. much as at the time I wasn't trying to play music, because I, you know, it was a part of my life at the church. I'm like, you know, mm -hmm. I hear music all the time. I could do that anytime, you know? Right, right. But they put me in a music class. Wow. So, yeah, if, if it wasn't for that, I probably wouldn't be here right now talking because I'll probably be a different type of musician I, and I wouldn't have took it as further as I went. Mm. But like, um, bro, like they put me in this music class. It was an orchestra, classical music. Um, and I was learning upright bass. Okay. So yeah, so I was one of the bigger kids. They was like, here, you can play upright. Okay. Put me on upright. It was like natural. I'm just hitting, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? I'm like, oh, this is like a guitar. This is a guitar right. stand up, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? And you know, I'm getting all the most valuable player awards and all that, you wow. know, in the jazz band uh, at school. And, um, uh, you know, at, uh, the whole time from middle school through high school, I was in the jazz band, jazz combos, mm -hmm. and I was also in chamber orchestra and orchestra. Okay. So I was waking up 6 a.m. 6 30 going to school practicing chamber orchestra reading music sight reading and you know that's why i tell a lot of people too they don't know that side of me either i can sight read i can write out a whole chart you know what i'm saying uh but yeah man that's how i got into it though um through somebody they mistakenly pretty much putting me in the class you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. and from there i it was just so natural man i just ran with it you know because wow. it was easy from where i came from you know what i'm saying right so well, well you yeah, know man. you know being in the church you know we always say well you know that that wasn't a mistake that was all divine <laughs> you know right, it, right, it was right. it was like that that was a that was a moment that exactly. if you didn't exactly. like, as you said it if you if you didn't get in that class or if you didn't get a get get your feet wet with that you mm -hmm. probably wouldn't be where you are and nah. I'm so glad you mentioned that about um, about reading music and sight reading and how you learned the element of doing that. Um, quiet is kept. It's the same with me. My high school teacher, uh, I'll never forget Mrs. Jenkins. She was the same way with me. Um, I didn't know how to read music um, as a ninth grader, as a freshman. I could hear something on piano and I could go to the piano and play it. And mm -hmm. she noticed that about me. I was already fluent on drums. I was good, but I wasn't reading. I wasn't reading drums. I, di I didn't know how to uh, read patterns and, and, and all the elements or whatever, uh, rudiments, I should say. Um, mm -hmm. But my 10th grade year, she made me take a piano class. Started taking piano. And yeah. she sent me in for, she played a piece of music. I'll never forget this. She made me play a piece of music, but I didn't look at the music. She played it. And she said, all right, Dante, I want you to come play. And she did this in front of the whole class. We got graded. So mm -hmm. she gave me she gave me like a like an A minus, B plus or something. She said, the mm -hmm. only reason why I'm not giving you a perfect score is because you didn't look up. Read it. <laughs> I didn't read it. Because I listened. My ear was so mm -hmm. developed that yeah, yeah. I could, you, you, she, and I was looking at her and I was listening to what she was playing. So I already knew what chords Mm -hmm. I, I knew what you know when it when it was major when it was minor when it was augmentative when it was diminished whatever and yep. I, when i got to the piano i got i knew what key she was in and just i just played it on it didn't look i was i was like this the whole time <laughs> right and, and i didn't look up and she she took off for that but what she did she she made me an example because she recognized i had an ear but she right. wanted me to develop more into the music. And, and that's my, that's when I learned theory. My right. high school teacher taught me theory. She taught mm -hmm. me what it was to sight read. And um, the, to and this you day. Probably in certain situations and you like, man, I'm glad I know this is an F minor sharp 11 or Listen, whatever chord. So and you just in a moment, you're like, oh man, I can go to this note. Da, da, da. It's, it's bro, I tell people all the time, man, that if you want a cheat code, Learn music theory. Learn music man. theory. Down and learn it at least a little bit. Like 
know what chords you're playing. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? If, I mean, it's cool to learn what people already did in the church and stuff like that. I'm going to talk specifically to the church. Yes. Church musicians. It's Come cool on. to learn what the people did, but you yeah. also got to learn what it is. That's right. You know what I'm saying? If there's a science behind it and there's some math behind it that could help you mm -hmm. progress to where you really want to go to. But like I said earlier, you got to spend the time. If you don't spend the time, that's on you, bro. Wow. You know what I'm saying? So the people that you're hearing that you like, that's because they spent a lot of time sitting down with their guitar, learning. Uh, like even my father, he probably won't confess, but he knows a bit of theory. You I know, know what he saying? does. I can hear yeah. it in his vocabulary when he plays yeah, chords. You know <laughs> like, yeah, you know, we don't all just play from ear. Yeah, we play from ear, but you know, I, I remember my dad. Um, and this, I gotta find this tape. It's somewhere sitting around. Okay. He prepared a piece that um, for Christmas one year. Okay. And I know he remembered this. And I remember sitting down and watching him, you know, come up with this, and he was reading it from a book. I think he got it from uh, Chet Atkins. Wow. You know what I'm yeah. And he that whole thing. I think it was one night. One night he was like, "I gotta do something for the program tomorrow." And that's on tape. I got to find that. But wow. it's something that he, uh, I've actually posted on my Instagram that he's played recently. Okay. You know, that's in his, like, his repertoire now. Mm -hmm. But I was there the moment he learned it. Wow. You know what I'm saying? And I saw and I saw what it takes to learn something on a guitar. You know, it's not like it, come, it don't come out of thin air, people. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Say that again. <laughs> yeah, like it don't come out of thin air. Like my father... As much as great as he is, and yes, he is anointed and has a spirit, all that. Trust me, that's the other half that kick in and that will make you cry. You're like, I don't even know why I'm crying. Because mm -hmm. he's, he's very tapped in spiritually. Yep. And with God, so like, but he also loves the guitar. He also actually loves playing and learning things, yes, he does. new things that he can implement to get the spirit to come in. That's right. You know what I'm saying? If you only know four chords, it's only so many, so much of the spirit probably gonna come in there. You feel me? Like, where <laughs> right. you gonna go? Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, right, so, right. It's, it's, it's up to you to, to to learn as much as you can so yeah. you're prepared, you know? And that's just, that's in life, period. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? No, you, wanna love, you wanna be on point as a man, as a woman, you know, especially as a man, you wanna, be on point you know what i'm saying you want to know uh i was talking to somebody they was like yeah you got to be a secure if you're going to get married to a woman you better be her security guard you better know how to be a security <laughs> that's guard. right that's right you know that's what i'm saying right. you know how to hold the house down how to do this how to do that it's the same thing with music man same thing. It's, it's stuff that you have to sit down and learn and and the thing about it now it's so much easier now man all you got to do is type it on youtube man dude Google. Whatever you want to learn, it's right there on YouTube, man. Every so day. are you going to do it or are you going to keep making excuses? Right. You know what I'm saying? So that's, that's you know, that's how I feel about it. Man. That, that's <laughs> that's good, Jairus. No, that's, I'm that's, just trying to give everybody the game, man. The real this is, game. This is excellent. And they need to hear this. And I'm, I'm so glad we're doing this. Again, for those of you all that are tuning in, I am talking to uh, three-time Grammy Award winning producer, uh, multi instrumentalist, extraordinary, extraordinary, Jairus Mozi. I'm so glad to have this conversation with you, man, because you dropping gems left and right. And um, yeah. th this thing about reading music and, and knowing theory is really, really important. Um, mm -hmm. I, when I was with Ashley Tamar, that was a gem that she dropped with a lot of the kids. Like, you know, learn theory because even if you um, get a particular gig and, and it's and it causes you even as a singer you, you may not you may know a piece but they want you to do it closer to what is on on the sheet music learn how to sight read mm -hmm. so that you can go through and 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 you know they probably want you to put your spin on it but you gotta know what right. what the music is saying and how to follow through where mm -hmm. it's repeating what what's you know it, it all of that is really 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 important it teaches you discipline and how to you know it ain't about you that's it's exactly about the, the whole of all of us playing together to get the you know the result you that's know right so sit down and learn your stuff 
That's yeah, you know, hello. And, yeah, because I remember my teacher, if he wasn't playing it right, he'll cut you. And you wouldn't be able to play at the performance because why why would I put you in there and you didn't you wouldn't have enough respect right. to sit down and learn what everybody else sat down and learned. Right. They sat down and took the time out to do it. So why you can't do it? Are you special? Right. You know, so that's what it takes, basically. Like it takes extra work. It does. You know what I'm saying? Like so yeah. yeah. No, this is good, man. This is good. So so we we talking about this and, and how you started. So so here we are. We fast forward to you know now you're you're in the industry, you're you're making moves, you're producing, um, working with some of the some of the greatest artists um on in the world. Um some of the some of the hottest producers and singers and R and B singers and pop singers and you name it. Um you 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 working with them. Um tell me First, I, I know you perform when you're when you're playing. You probably I know you have a band. When you're on stage, how do you prepare? What's your what what what's your routine? What does that look like? How do you how you you know approach um, hitting the stage? Man, that's a good question. Like honestly, um, like like we said earlier, man, I was grew up spiritual. Mm -hmm. So like watching my father, mm -hmm. I learned that like those days are sacred so like anytime you get to play is like a sacred time you know right. what i'm saying so yeah. like you never you never know if that's your last time yeah either but so that's how i approach it like man this this might be my last time playing man let me get ready to just you know let the let the lord and let all the spirits and everything that need all the good vibes that need to come through me to come out and, and bless and heal people mm -hmm. that's what i'm trying to receive that day before the concert Wow. So like, especially when it's my show, right. when it's my own show, like that, I'm really like, I'm like that. You know? And like, I used to like, I don't do it no more because I changed my diet, but I used to go like all vegan before my show and just eat fruits and vegetables. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, so I can really tap in because I'm really like that, man. Like I like tapping into the spirit, you know what I'm saying? Letting stuff flow through me. Like I said, I learned a lot in school so I can be able to not think so much when i'm on stage and it just flow right you know what I'm saying? and then times when i do need the theory you know it just y'all just think, oh this is an e minor i can i can go to f sharp right here i can play a <laughs> right i can play sharp and just hold the sharp because i know i'm in e minor right you know what I'm saying? if you right. know that you know you know what i'm saying you can just so go there laugh because you know that this, this you... is like one of the keys to getting to that next it's, level it's that a relative I, they don't want to learn <laughs> So like if I'm in the F if I'm in the F sharp dominant seven, I know I can hold up on a, a B flat and just hold up on come it. Come on, come on. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> or I can hold on an E, or I yeah. can hold on a e flat. Yeah. And go up. Once you learn these things and you uh you put it in with man, I'm you telling you, it. man, it takes you to the next level. It does. Like. You know what I'm saying? What was we talking about before this stuff? <laughs> <laughs> no, just <laughs> just your approach to going to going on stage and doing the show. But so no, you, you know, yeah, yeah. I I want to be free and open in my body because I want the spirits and everything to come through me, man. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I want I want to bless people. Yeah, you know that's my main thing. Whatever I got to do to get in a good mood as well. Like you know, so you know, it's really about eating. It's your food. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? A lot of people don't know. That helps, man. Eating before you play. Listen, you know the, 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 it's a discipline. Eating the right thing, though. Yes. You know? Eating the yeah. right things, being disciplined. But that it's yeah. all a big part. Um, I, I know a lot of musicians when they hit the road, they they just they don't take it serious, serious, mm -hmm. um, to the point where their health becomes an issue when they're traveling. And that's your your you know, if your body, if your temple is not up to par you're yeah. not going to be prepared yeah you know when you're on stage and you're in front of those people and your body's not fueled correctly um mm -hmm. i started this year off man just literally I, I i literally have cut red meat out of my diet totally i wow. I, I don't um I, I i don't eat pork but uh, i think last year it was like a lot of um a lot of fish and and chicken that was probably it for the majority of 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 the year um yeah. outside of ink my my vegetable intake but mm -hmm. this year man i've had no meat this year so far wow. like literally so we we went on like a 22 day um reset 
and today actually today is the last day of it but it's like for me it's like it's refreshing i lost about 12 10 10 to 12 pounds mm -hmm. just yep. by eating just fruits and vegetables yeah just man the beginning of the year man and, and it, it does something to your mind you you yep. have more energy yep you you, you can do it, it just it you you're you're in a different space you know yeah, and this, i'm gonna tell people while we on here about that because a lot of people do need to hear this man you mm -hmm. probably don't like when i was coming up mm -hmm. um i just remember um you know my mom and them kind of spoiled me a little bit they didn't they didn't like force me to eat vegetables mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. so i kind of grew up and once i got older and i realized i'm not eating no vegetables mm -hmm. you know what I'm, saying? I'm not eating none period right so, uh, <laughs> man up until honestly a few years ago man i, I figured out like because i started dating this young lady and she she um she basically you know taught me about smoothies you know mm. what i'm saying and i didn't know about that that i could put everything in one thing and just chug it down because mm -hmm. i hate textures of food right so i know there's a lot of people out there that hate textures of certain things and and this and they just don't like veggies or this and that so you can put your Kale, your, uh, your kale, your spinach, and all your spinach, <laughs> all that with some bananas, some strawberries, strawberries, come on, chocolate, some, <laughs> some peanut butter, some chia seeds, whatever you want to put in there, come on, and tuck that down for your day, and that'll take care of your body pretty much for that day. You can pretty much eat whatever you want after that because right. you have at least a coating. Right, start, you know, start out doing that. You know, right. get you a smoothie every day. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like in the morning, get you some vitamin C, and all this will start helping your plan as well. Like it's gonna help start helping you schedule things out. You know, wow. stay on the schedule. Like at eight, I'm I'm waking up at seven. At uh, you know, I'm gonna take my shower, brush my teeth at seven thirty eight. I'm I'm making a smoothie. If you I promise you, if you start out your day with a smoothie, you're gonna have some of the best days of your life. Yes, you period. Will. Yes, yeah, like it's gonna give you the energy you need. And I know it's a lot of people that need to hear that because it's it's a it's a starting point because I know I, I was in it. Mm -hmm. I was like, how am I gonna start? Because I know I was messing up with my health, mm -hmm. but I didn't know how I was gonna do it. And then smoothies came into play. See? I started yeah. Now you, you, know you, you dropping gems, man, and I and I, I hope that someone uh, someone is listening to this that they hear what you just said because it's important. And we're losing yeah. so many people. We're in the pandemic right now. Um, as you know, as we all know, um, and this thing attacks the lungs, it, it, but it's it's the, the you know, uh, COVID is really immune system. If we build our immune system up the way we can fight off a lot of things, not just really? COVID, colds, mm -hmm. flu, all a lot of stuff, but we have to build our immune system up. And it's yep. so important in, in how we show up eating um yeah. what we eat I, I tell people and i learned this through my my late uncle um anthony he he um he had something he gave me and i i was I, I was looking at it and one of the things the guy said on there it was a it was like a workshop and it had to deal with food you know my uncle was a was was a phenomenal bass player mm -hmm. um, oh, yeah. Wow, man. Anthony, yeah yeah so yeah. you know i learned so much from him but he had this tape and, and it was this guy talking about nutrition and he said, "You as long as you eat dead things, and and we, he defined dead things as like anything that is not coming from the earth, like that is like right. that's not vegetation, right? Mm -hmm. it, it's like you you feel dead. So when right. you're eating that dead meat, when you eating the the sugar, when you eating all of that stuff constantly every day, fried foods, you feel sluggish because yeah. those things are dead, and it's really." not revitalizing your cells in your body but as soon as they do what you just said even if you don't like to eat fruits and vegetables do a smoothie right do a smoothie and i'm telling you that's the way that is the key. <laughs> oh i'm trying to tell people it, your cells are saying hello thank you i am awake now because your <laughs> cells are just they're looking for something that is alive and mm -hmm. real fruit and vegetables have living um living cells it, it it revitalizes your cells in, in your body because it's live food it's yep. live food so you, you you feel revitalized so man no that's 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 wisdom and and yeah. our musicians need to hear that church musicians y'all need it's, to hear that it's little stuff man that fried like, chicken I, and biscuits ain't gonna I, do it 
Yeah, I learned a lot of this from my dad, man. If yeah. you get back here, I'm sure y'all can have an hour conversation about health mm -hmm. and, and how that plays a part in how you play. That's you know right. what I'm saying? Like, you can't think right if you got you just ate a whole bunch of uh, brisket and and uh, whatever. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? Pizza <laughs> and and you ate, but you can eat it, but don't eat too much of too, it. Right. You know what I'm saying? Just, right. Just you know. But uh, if you got too much of that in your body, man, it's going to slow you. Like you said, it'll slow you down. Slow you down. You're not even knowing that yeah. it's slowing you down yeah. until you start eating right. And you're like, oh, dang, this is how I'm really supposed to feel. Right. I, I forgot how this felt. Mm -hmm. You know, start feeling like a kid. Right. Like, wow. <laughs> yeah. like, like I, I can. Got like, this is how I used to do when I was a kid. I'll just yeah. get ready to say, I feel like running around the block. Like, and yeah, like, yeah. yeah. And you see older people, bro, man, I'm tired and done it. Y'all can do it too. Mm -hmm. Just get up Change and start walking. You know what I'm saying? Start walking. At least get your walk in and get a smoothie in. That's it. You know? That's it. Yep. Use that energy and use it for the good. No, this mm -hmm. is good, man. You you would drop Jairus is dropping gems. <laughs> so I, I appreciate it, man. You you really uh spreading a lot of love and, and really giving a lot of a lot of things. I, just a couple more questions before we end. Um mm -hmm. who who was your ideal you've worked with a lot of musicians who who's your ideal musician to work with and why mm. honestly somebody that i work with or it could be I, past or it could be somebody that you look forward so, to working with yeah so i mean my list of people um what's crazy is when i was playing with prince i didn't because where i came from from the church mm -hmm. They wasn't letting us listen to Prince. Right. You know what I'm saying? Watching movies and stuff. I remember uh, <laughs> my uncle and them watching Purple Rain, and they'll make us go upstairs. Right. Like, I'll go upstairs. You know what I'm saying? But uh, that's all I knew about Prince. Like I couldn't watch him. Right. But then when that came around, uh, I was, you know, I had a good head on my shoulders as a young man, actually, like, and I was very mature. Yeah. So like, I was able to handle it. You know what yeah. I'm saying? I got up there, but that was, bro. When I tell you an uh, ideal situation and just to be around that is like, it's insane. Wow. It's absolutely insane. So like, imagine, uh, you know, when I got called to do the gig, they're like, yeah, we're going to um, send in a note to your school and you're going to be getting out early. You're going to be getting out at like 12. Everybody else was getting out at 1 30. Mm -hmm. I'm getting out at 11 30, 12. So I can be at rehearsal. Right. It was sending a, uh, cars they were sending like the black the blacked out cars sometimes they would send interns which was funny because they would send interns and they'd be mad they'd be mad because they would have to drive from all the way from Bur uh, burbank to long beach wow and then drive me back up so that for, for people that don't know that's like pretty much like an hour drive okay. 45 minutes okay so like and then if you get in traffic that's another hour and a half back up right you know what i'm saying right so like Man, it's just experiencing those little things, man. And I got to be around, uh, you know, Quest Love and wow. John Blackwell, rest in peace, Larry Graham. Mm -hmm. So many people, man, stars and stuff, like to where like, I just got used to being around celebrities. That was like, you know, my mm -hmm. main thing. Like, oh, <laughs> my heart just came off. But uh, okay. now I got used to uh, playing around celebrities. I mean, being around celebrities, mm -hmm. you know? And so, um. That was the ideal. Like it was just fun, man. It yeah. was. I can't. Like, it's not. It's no way I can explain it because it was like a dream. Right. You know. And I don't. I didn't understand that I was ready at that moment. I didn't have a clue. Wow. You know. I'm thinking like at the audition. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, to shout out to Tim Stewart. Okay. You know, y'all go look him up. He's a uh, awesome guitar player. But he's the one that hit me up to audition for Prince. He was like, Wow. Uh, yeah, man. I'm going on tour with Sheila E. And um. Mm -hmm. Prince needs a guitar player. He's doing these house parties and stuff. I kind of barely didn't even hear what he said. He kind to just, because I used to fill in for anything he did. So anything he called me for, I'd be like, yes. You know what I'm saying? Whatever right. it is. Right. <laughs> but at that time, I wasn't even driving yet. Wow. So he was like, man, I'm going to come pick you up. I'm going to drive you up there. So he drove me up. To, I got my mom's permission. And she gave me permission. She said, you can go. I went up there and um, I played, bro. And mind you, the whole time I'm going up there, I'm nervous because I'm like, oh, this is Prince, you know, for real. Wow. Like, I didn't get it, you know what I'm saying? And then I got in there and they had, it was Frank McComb playing keys. He had a keyboard, I'll never forget it. 
um, Josh uh, Dunham mm -hmm. on bass and Cora uh, Coleman on drums. On they drums. Was right there. It was like they was just waiting for us to get there. It was like they was already there rehearsing. Wow. Got in there, they turn in, uh, turn on the tape recorder, and um, well, first they let me see Tim play a couple songs that they was doing. Sure. And all I did was just copy Tim. I just copied what Tim played, put my little swing on it, you mm -hmm. know, off myself. When they told, see, that's one thing I I learned coming up too. You know, you stay in the pocket until it's your time to solo. Um, and then you, when you solo, you give it to them as right. much as you can, and they go right back to the pocket. So I knew that at a young age. Right. But you know what I'm saying? So that helped me in that audition because I just learned the parts that Tim was playing. I saw it. Mm -hmm. I'm like, oh, that's easy. <laughs> Got on there, played it. Mm -hmm. um, next day, they was like, um, well, the, after the audition, they was like, yeah, um, we'll give you a call back. So that night, Prince heard it. Called me, he was like, you going, you coming back up here tomorrow. You know what I'm wow. saying? We gonna, like said, they sent the note to the school and that was it. Long story short, man, that was, that was like the most ideal experience, man. Wow. Like that and um and and also um i got a chance to work with uh rafael sadiq wow which is one of my like i don't want to say idol but you know like one of my uh inspirations mm -hmm. growing up you know what i'm saying like as a, on the uh you know i guess you could say the secular side or whatever because yeah. he's like when i used to hear his music i'm like dang that sounds like my uncle robert or somebody playing a guitar you know what so, i'm saying I'm like, yes. that's kind of swag <laughs> like that it's like al greenish you know mm -hmm. what i'm saying Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, man, I got a chance to work with him, and um, he, um, I worked with him in the studio a couple times. He came to my studio, okay, um, and um, actually, uh, he was doing a show in South Africa, and he, he was like, "Man, I need you to fill in." I was like, "What? Yes, like you know, wow. got a chance to fill in with him." So that was a good experience. It's just good to meet people, and like I said, it's you get to see how they think mm -hmm. in real life. You get to see their mistakes. You get to see where they flaw in that. Wow. That where they, you know what I'm saying? A lot of people are not going to tell you they flaws. That's right. Until you see it. You know what I'm saying? That's so right. like, you like, oh, okay. When I, I just, I learned that too. I'm like, okay, every celebrity got their little thing or whatever. Right. You know what I'm saying? They human, you know? So. We, we yeah, all man, do. Man, with Anthony Hamilton, that was crazy. That was dope. Wow. Yeah, that was my first tour experience. With Anthony Hamilton. With Anthony Hamilton. I was 18. And uh, this was before we did the song "Best of Me" and all that. Okay. I was just his guitar player. Wow! So uh, I did that for like two years or something, and that that was a great learning experience, man. Mm -hmm. Just being around Anthony because he was a he's just a good guy. Okay, and he's willing to pour into you. Like, like we talk about spiritually, he's spiritual. So he, you know, I learned a lot about that, man. Just with him and just. I've been around so many people, man. I see, day. man. And and, and the, the 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 crazy thing is just seeing you, how humble you are, how you're you're still a student, but yet yeah. this experience, but you still remain a student. You know, you're you're teachable, you're learnable. You 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 stay in a place of of I'm not too big where I can't listen, not too not big where I can't learn or whatever. Like you, you 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 come across that way, and that that's going. That's what's gonna take you even further, you know. Um, just just that insight, you know. You're learning and gleaning from all of these experiences, and then you you come back and and you still learning, and that right. that says a lot. That that says a lot. So so you you so here we here we are, you know. You and and we're getting ready to con conclude this, man. But I, I really appreciate you you coming forth doing this. Um, people now no will get a get a chance to hear not only you you speak but give give some thought and knowledge and understanding to jerry's the person um not just the musician but the person the person mm -hmm. behind the guitar the person behind the production um the thought process that um he approaches um the music in in, in the production um you're you're working now um with uh, bj chicago kid um anderson pack uh leela james um d smoke so so some of those projects that you're that you're working on are these are these are current projects and and um are you producing are you just doing um instrument um playing on it what what's your approach to these particular um projects that you're doing now man i've uh graduated mm -hmm. just, just a guitar man <laughs> to a producer, that's what's up. Crack 
it's a hey man for all y'all that's struggling with that because i understand that too it's a struggle because people put a label on you because you just say oh you just a guitar player you just Talk a bass player. you just a drummer you know you can do all of that man you can do you can play the drums keys bass guitar you can be all those players you can be a, and then uh what the point i'm trying to make is you can be a producer yes you know what I'm saying? but you have to study being a producer you can't just think that you a good musician and think that your song's gonna be tight because you got people shouting and all that and all. It's di it's a different world making right. songs and, and and like church and playing out and you know playing out wherever you're playing and making people bob their head. It's a little different, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. So you have to study a lot, you know what I'm saying, and you have to go in a lot of rooms and you got to cut your teeth, you know what I'm saying, mm -hmm. and you have to. I would say. I, I look at it like this, man. The music industry and the music that we do is kind of like the lottery. You know what I'm saying? It's like right. you gotta buy a bunch of tickets. Yeah. Hopefully, you know, one of them, you know, the one tickets hits. are songs that you make. Right. You know what I'm saying? So hopefully one of them hit. Right. You know what I'm saying? And every now and then you're gonna get them, you know, and then you right. got some certain people that, you know, they buy a lot of tickets. Dude, they, hello. So they a lot of songs right you know what I'm saying? so so when you see certain people get a you know a grammy or whatever trust me man it took thousands of songs to get there it didn't take a hundred or two hundred it took thousands. thousands it took thousands to get that one or two that you like oh man you did it like all the songs we're talking about you know today or whatever mm -hmm. man like it took like so like i always tell people this story when i was with anthony hamilton mm -hmm. So I toured with him. We did all the tours and all that. Right. A couple years later, he called me. He was like, I heard I hear the stuff that you're doing with BJ Chicago Kid. I had pretty much gave BJ a bunch of beats for free, and that ended up being his first EP. You know what I'm saying? Wow. That got a little traction. It was like, who's producing this stuff? You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So I ended up flying out there with Anthony. We ended up working on it. I made, I mean, probably about 20 songs. Wow. You know what I'm saying? In a week span. On, they only picked one song. I was wow. pissed, bro. I was I was mad. You know what I'm saying? Wow. But then I realized. So this is what happened. That song ended up being best to me. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Okay. So at the time, I didn't have a name or nothing like that as a producer. So mm -hmm. they was going with this person song or this person song because they had a name, mm -hmm. right? Those first two songs did pretty good. They did good, but then they ended up somebody I guess gave them a suggestion was like. Man, you should put out best of me they put out best of me a year later and that song ended up hitting and it's still playing like to this day like yes ways, yes uh, <laughs> any, type of barbers, any anything you're gonna hear that at a black function yes you, know you what will <laughs> so like i say that to say man i had to put i had to work on 20 songs to get one wow you know what i'm saying and that one ended up being a one, you know what I'm saying? So that's why, like I said, like it's a lot of work you gotta put into it, man. On the production side, this is much amount, amount of work that you put, or like on your instrument, you yeah, gotta put that into thing. learning how songs are made. That's right. Who who wrote this song? You know, study Marvin Gaye and uh, whoever. You know what I'm saying? Kirk right. Franklin. Right. Study how these. Sit, it's really about simplicity. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So. Mm -hmm. I don't want to go on a tangent, man. I'm 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 willing to talk as long as you want, but no, that's, listen, it's so. a it's a passion, and you can tell in 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 listening to you talk the passion behind it, which is mm -hmm. why there's so much success in it. You're you're all in, and um, yeah. you you dropping you dropping gems along the way as you're talking. I mean, one of the things you said is being in those rooms, being in those right. spaces, um, sometimes just not saying anything. But being in there, just being a being and being the fly on the wall, yes, yep. so that you can gleam and learn. I I, I talked to um, so Joey Somerville. He's he's that guy for me, um, locally. Mm -hmm. There's so many that are here, um, but Joey really kind of took me under his wings, and I, and he didn't know it, but I was yep. learning. Um, I, I you know he we we did a lot of studio sessions, a lot of um, right, a lot of yep. just yep. every. Yep. Man, yeah. listen. I mean, with top producers, yeah. and the thing was, yeah, I, yeah, I was playing steel, and I, I helped arrange a couple of the songs or whatever. But it was like to be there and to glean from what he's doing, 
and right. what the producer's doing and how he's implementing I, I was just like watching like mm -hmm. oh okay yep. oh you know and it was for me it was just like it was a learning experience being in his studio with him because he he's you know his his engineering skills are beyond you know mm -hmm. and he, he he used to teach that so for me it was just like even doing a, a session you know when i i did stuff here and then when i sat with him it was just like oh mm -hmm. i was doing this all wrong you know or right. i i had to learn something different with with what he was teaching me from songwriting mm -hmm. to implementing a, a just taking the, a, a guitar lick and, yep. and making something out of it he sat me down and he I don't know if he well I, I told him eventually I said you you don't realize how much you taught me and I, I was really a student to you. you you glad because I'm with you dude you you have really shed light on so many things that you don't even realize like mm. I was just taking notes mentally watching not yep. talking when other people were involved I was just I was that guy in the room like mm, okay yeah, so imagine bro like so <laughs> <laughs> that's how I was raised. I was raised as a fly on the wall, man, with my dad, with all these great musicians, man. So I learned how to shut up and <laughs> learn. Like, that is a that's an art. And we gotta say that. Yeah, Sometimes like, you gotta learn how to shut up when you in a room. <laughs> that's what a lot of people don't understand. You talking too much. Like you you got two ears and one, one mouth. One mouth. Come on. That's for a reason, man. Hello. And you got eyes too so watch learn listen yes if you really got something to say then say it but if you ain't got nothing to say really you know that it's gonna make a, a negative effect on the room or just be quiet like because you want to throw everything off yeah. you know what i'm saying especially if you're not the producer or anybody in charge if you're in these certain rooms that's in any room period but if you're in a, a room with a, a certain producer and all that just chill man you lucky to be there you lucky yeah. to be up in there you know you know whatever they need get them some coffee or something you right know? serve sit back and learn serve yeah. and learn yes yeah, man. <laughs> listen man yeah. I, I i'm so appreciative uh appreciative to you um jaris for not only doing the interview man but just taking out time out of your schedule to to sit and talk man i i really hope that the listeners that are that are listening to um, this podcast and listening to our conversation really glean and and really um, become more insightful to not only their art but to how they do what they do by the, the gems that you dropped in the conversation that we we we've had. Um, last thing I, I'll say or, or just ask you your new album that you're working on, Food Stamps. You got to yeah. tell me what, what 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 why the name Food Stamps. <laughs> So that all goes back to where, you know, Ruckle Street, Come Indianapolis, on. Indiana, you know, uh, the headquarters, Church of Living God. Yeah. But I, when I, I opened my eyes into this amazing world of music and just that's food stamps was one of the things that was a part of my life. Yeah. Growing up. Yeah. And I didn't understand what it was. It was a handout or whatever it is. But right. to me, it was amazing. Oh, we got. We got food stamps, like, <laughs> right? right. <laughs> my mom gave me some food stamps. Go to the store, get you some chips, whatever. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. That was just a part of growing up for me. Right. You know what I'm saying? That people don't know. I had a. We wasn't rich. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. We wasn't like a rich family or anything like that. So yeah. I had a. Uh, we didn't have a rough upbringing, but right. we had right. fun. We didn't know that we didn't have a lot of money, but because right. it was, fun, you know right. what I'm saying? But that's what I, the story I'm trying to tell on this album. Of my roots, um, you know, it's got a little steel on there. It's it's churchy. It's more soulful, churchy, and then um, so yeah, man. Like that's pretty much where it come from. Yeah. Well, well, I'm excited. Any any um, uh, date that you're shooting for this year for? You Honestly, out? Man, not, not yet. <laughs> I, uh, I would love to because I almost pretty much got it done. So mm -hmm. I would love to just drop it. You okay. know what I'm saying? Okay. But. Mm -hmm. you know i learned from just dropping stuff you know yeah it'll fall flat people just look kind of past it you right. know so i want people to actually pay attention to my to my original music man you and know what i'm will. saying that's and you know i think i deserve that you know you just 
listen to me. Listen to my original music because that's another stigma people got, you know, that I'm fighting against that I'm going to break. <laughs> that, you know, you can be a background musician. Come on. Come from the background. You can be a producer. Come on. Get three Grammys because people was telling me I couldn't do that. You can't be a producer. Your beat's whack. Da, da, da. I kept working. Now I got three Grammys. Mm. Now I'm about to take over, you know, and not take over, but I'm about to do my artistry, man. Like, yeah. that's my next step. And then after that, mark my words, I'm going to be a record executive. I don't do know it. what label is going to be my label or whatever, but I'm going to be in the industry, man, like a, a impact. Well, you are a positive. You are, so. You already doing it. You already doing it, man. I'm, I'm very proud of you. I'm, I'm proud of the, your success and, and your upbringing. And um, it shows. It shows. And, um, man, keep keep doing it. Keep pressing. You got a fan here, man, for real. For real. <laughs> <laughs> so, Quiet is kept. The the um, the intro, you all go visit um, his website, um, uh, Jairus Mosey. Uh, that's J-A-I-R-U-S-M-O-Z-E. E E, just just search Google his name. You listen, countless videos, countless um sites. He has a website swag sample, swag sample dot com. Go to that website and support this guy. Um, yep. the the um the intro to the to the podcast. Uh, it's me pretty much doing a lot of the instrumentation, but the sample that was laid on there was Jairus Mosey's. So. Yep. Listen, this is how we hey, and that's one another thing I want to tell people start your business. <laughs> come on, come on. Yeah, yeah. So that's, that's one it. of my businesses as well as industrylessons.com. That's right. So if you want to learn my guitar stylings and, and a lot of things that I talk about, I have a, a secret secrets to success course that you can buy. And um I talk about everything that I went through in the industry, how I did this and how you should do that, how I think and um yeah, all that stuff is on the website, industrylessons.com. And these are my companies. That's why I want people to understand this is not somebody that I'm going through and all of this here. Um, I'm actually, I am the owner of these companies. I'm Hello. running them. You know Hello. what I'm saying? So um, you can do that too, man. If you're really thinking about that, if you hear this, you can do other things along with music, inside of music. You know what I'm saying? That's and there's right. other avenues that you can do. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. Tap, tap into it. Listen, man, yep. I'm, I'm proud of you. Keep going. Um, I'm 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 a, I'm your biggest supporter, and all these links will be at the bottom of this podcast. So just all you have to do is just click and and just go find this information and support my dear friend Jarris Mosey, my brother. Keep yes, going, sir. man. I'm I'm really proud of you. I can't wait until you do drop the album. Uh, probably when you do, we may have to go, come on again and do some type of listening party or something on yeah, on the podcast. Yeah. So we'll 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 talk about that in the, in the future. But man, thank you, thank you for doing this. I appreciate no you. No problem at all. I appreciate you. This.